So, a while back, I had made a video collabing with a bunch of my friends talking about what games we thought deserved a sequel. And as I was working on other videos to show all you lovely people, I thought to myself, man, I want to do that again. So here I am with part two, featuring a whole new cast of homies to share what games or series they believe deserve another chance to shine again. I've rambled enough for an intro though, so without further ado, let my bros take it away. Hey y'all, my name is Shanky, and I run the channel Shanky JRPGs. So Crimson slid into my Twitter DMs, that saucy YouTuber, shame on you, and asked me about games that I feel deserve a sequel. First of all, Crimson, thank you so much for inviting me into this collab. There are plenty of JRPGs that I can think of that deserve sequels. Lost Odyssey, Crystallis, Golden Sun, Dark Dawn, Skies of Arcadia. But the one that I feel stands out and deserves a sequel the most is The Legend of Dragoon. The Legend of Dragoon was released in 2000 for the original PlayStation, and while the story didn't exactly leave much of an opening for a sequel, I still feel we need another game in the series. So for The Legend of Dragoon, the one thing that stood out was the battle system. We've had context-sensitive battle systems before, with games like Super Mario RPG, but in this game, the combat felt super smooth and fun. Basically, you attack with additions, which are just that, additions to normal attacks. You'll be hitting X when the moving square lines up with the inner square, and counters occasionally requiring you to hit circle, which is signified by a red barrier. It sounds really simple, but it turns the combat from a boring, mashing X combat system to one where you actually have to pay attention. Even outside of combat, Legend of Dragoon was really a unique experience. And for that, I feel like it needs a new game in the series because this game is constantly talked about, but Sony didn't really do anything with the IP. So that's another thing. Legend of Dragoon was developed by Sony of Japan. There is no excuse for why we haven't seen anything new for this game outside of the PS3, PS4, and PS5 classic ports. Seriously, there's like no references or anything to this game. And let's not even talk about the state of that PS5 classic port at release. Big oof. Legend of Dragoon was just so amazing, and I'm hoping that one day Sony revisits this IP and gives us another game. Maybe a prequel that takes place during the Dragon Campaign, which is the huge war between the humans and Winglies 11,000 years before the events of Legend of Dragoon. Honestly, there's a ton of things that could be done. I can only imagine what the Dragoon transformations would be like with the technology we have now as opposed to almost 25 years ago when this game originally came out. I could talk forever about Legend of Dragoon, so I'll cut it short here, but Crimson, thanks so much for having me join in on such a great topic. And if you guys love JRPGs, make sure to hit me up over on my channel, Shinky JRPGs. And as always, everyone, have a wonderful day. Hello there, the name's Cyrus. Local Falcom fanboy and prodigious onion lover. Green onion. That is a green onion. My choice for a game that I wish got a sequel is a little cult classic that I never really get to talk about very much. Simply called The Darkness. Based loosely on the comic book series under the same name, created by Mark Silvestri, Garth Ennis, and David Wall, The Darkness was a first-person shooter that released all the way back in 2007. Man, that was 17 years ago. <sighs> wow. That was also the same year we got Halo 3 and Mario Galaxy 1. Ah, uh, but anyway, I'm getting off track. <laughs> this game followed the protagonist, Jackie Estacado a Mafia hitman who, upon celebrating his 21st birthday, manifested an ancient power passed down through his bloodline. I remember the night of my 21st birthday. That was the first time I died. Leading him down a path of grief, anger, and a whole lot of bloodshed. Despite being a standard FPS, you had loads of other fun tricks to use, like your various darkness powers ranging from tentacles used to impale your foes to funny little gremlins called Darklings to do your bidding. <laughs> For the gameplay sections, you actively had to avoid the light in order to regenerate health and use your darkness powers. 
which led you to shooting out every single light source you could see, ever seeking the cold embrace of darkness. You see how the uh, how the title works? It's all encompassing, just like just like the the darkness itself. Another cool aspect of this game that stuck with me all of these years is the portrayal of the romance between Jackie and his girlfriend Jenny. At one point in the game, you can visit her apartment, and you're treated to a very nice scene between the two that ends up with the two of them sitting on the couch and watching To Kill a Mockingbird. The whole movie, should you so desire. I am not kidding. It was such a wonderful portrayal of the average, mundane, everyday life that I feel most games nowadays fail to take into consideration. You won't believe this. Look, John Carlos spelled your name wrong again. <laughs> Well, you gonna blow out the candles? Like with trails, sometimes it's okay to stop and smell the roses before continuing your grand quest. Technically, this game did receive a sequel that swapped to a more cel-shaded art style and drastically improved how visceral and intense the combat felt, but it ended on a fairly brutal cliffhanger that most likely we'll never see the completion of. Much like the Shenmue series, the studio that developed the game, Digital Extremes, has been radio silent on the series for a very long time, which in this day and age of microtransactions, battle passes, and turning everything into some kind of live service game, maybe it's best that this series retains its cult classic reputation among the fans. Regardless, I'd still love to see the conclusion to Jackie's story. It's been a series that's remained on my mind even all these years later, and that's why it was my pick for this video. So thank you Crimson for having me on this collab, and I can't wait to see the full video. Take care everyone, make sure to subscribe to Mr. Sexy Voice 2. My time is up, so peace out! And that was the end of the line. Yo, you two what is good, bruv gang, what is good, and we are back with another collaboration video. A massive shout and thank you to my man Crimson for having me be part of this amazing collaboration. Now, usually I would kind of come in with a script for most of these type of collaboration videos, and most of my videos in general, I am pretty terrible at speaking off the top of my head, but... When it came to the topic of this video, which is about games that deserve a sequel, um, the one game that came off the top of my head was Ghost of Tsushima, man. Uh, this is a game that really holds a special place in my heart. I absolutely adore Ghost of Tsushima and came at a really beautiful time in my life. I just want to kind of talk about it. I know I've only got like two to four minutes to talk, but if you guys will bear with me. So, Ghost of Tsushima means a lot to me, man. This game really, really means a lot to me. Um, game came out around COVID times and I was kind of jobless going into COVID, basically. So, I was kind of jobless for around two years, basically. And I think I kind of got off the back of a job that wasn't really the best. I was in it for about two months and then I was kind of living off like benefit type of money and I was kind of really looking for something that, I was kind of looking for a game that could just, you know, make me feel the same way that I felt when I replayed Persona 5 again. Cause I replayed Persona 5 and completed it um, around COVID, early COVID 2020. But um, I had my eyes on Ghost of Tsushima, and if anyone knows me well, everyone knows that I absolutely adore anything to do with Samurais and anything to do with Edo Japan. So, um, Ghost of Tsushima absolutely caught my attention, man. The game is such a beautiful game. Jin Sakai is an absolutely amazing protagonist. The world of Tsushima and the island of Tsushima is absolutely beautiful. Absolutely beautiful game, an absolutely beautiful world. The combat on the game is so well done. Um, they did come out with DLC for Ghost of Tsushima, but I think the reason why I want to see a sequel is just so I can see more of I um, oh, Iki Island is where they moved to on the DLC. But the island of Tsushima as, it's, as it is, um, is an absolutely beautiful island. And I'll probably like to see more to do with Jin's life. And maybe just to do something to do with, I don't know, Jin probably starting a family maybe. That could be something that would be absolutely amazing. Um, and they could do no more than just improve on what actually made the game great. Ghost Tsushima is absolutely one of my favourite games I've ever played and actually funny enough is the only, well I shouldn't say only, it's the first game that I ever platinumed 
on um, PlayStation, which tells me a lot about how much I love the game because I do not platinum games. Most of the times I get on, have a good time and get off and then pretty much I don't really go back. Maybe might go back in a few years if I feel like replaying it, but Ghost Tsushima had, had me absolutely hooked, man, especially the multiplayer as well. I'm kind of going off on a tangent, but the multiplayer had me absolutely hooked, absolutely loved Ghost Tsushima, man. Um, such a beautiful game. I implore anyone to go and play this game, but I do feel it deserves a sequel so, so much, man, because of how successful the first game was. And I personally, I just want to see more of Ghost Tsushima. So for my choice for a game that deserves a sequel, Ghost Tsushima is 100% my choice. So I just want to give a big shout out and thank you to my man Crimson for having me be part of this amazing collaboration effort, man. I really, really cannot wait to see everyone else's picks. So for me too, this has been your bruv, the big bruv, and I will see you guys very, very soon. Peace. Thanks for inviting me to this collab, Crimson. For those who don't know me, hello, my name's Colin, and I typically make content around fighting games and JRPGs. So when Crimson asked me what games I felt needed sequels, I had a hard time deciding, as it was between Darkstalkers and Capcom vs SNK. Now both franchises are legendary within the FGC for different reasons. Darkstalkers is famous for the fact it's one of the few horror-themed fighting games out there that has seen mass appeal. Now Capcom vs SNK is legendary for a different reason. So that's what I chose, as there's more life to that franchise with Capcom and SNK now working together again in collaboration, thanks to Terry Bogard and Mai Shiranui appearing in Season 2 of Street Fighter VI, and the recent re-release of SVC Chaos, which was SNK's take on the Capcom vs SNK formula. So, why is Capcom vs SNK such an important game, and why does it deserve a sequel? There have been two entries in this franchise, the first released in the year 2000 and the second game came a year later. They were important to the history of fighters because Capcom and SNK have always been two of the largest developers within the fighting game space. You have people who are squarely in the Capcom camp and others who love SNK. Just like CM Punk is a Paul Heyman guy, I'm an SNK guy. To me, they just feel nicer. Either way, members of the FGC have been asking for a new Capcom vs SNK game since 2022 when EVO returned to in-person events. During that time frame, Capcom and SNK released some artwork in collaboration. That was the first inkling that these two giants had repaired their fractured relationship, which is huge considering Street Fighter and the King of Fighters are both two of the most influential fighting games of all time. Capcom vs SNK also happens to have one of the most unique gameplay systems in all of fighting games, as it uses the Groove system. The Grooves emulate specific titles from both companies' back catalogs, and it also gives you a taste of what some SNK characters would play like in a Capcom title, and vice versa. The Grooves also made for a really unique metagame, as you could pick Grooves for each character, allowing for a lot of player expression, which is super important in fighting games. The ones always best regarded within the FGC are ones where player expression is paramount. That's why Dead or Alive fans love 5 so much, as player expression was huge in that game. It's also why people love the older KOF titles, as you could have a mirror match and people would play the character so differently that no match would be the same, even with the same team compositions. So at present, Capcom vs SNK is kind of what the FGC needs, a game where expression is at the forefront and a massive crossover between two of the largest players in the game. It'd also be really cool to see what Capcom could do with modern tech for this title, as the older ones used largely outdated arcade-based hardware. But Capcom was still able to push out two beautiful games. Where do you stand on the sprites vs 3D model debate, though? Thanks for having me on Crimson, I really appreciate you asking me. I look forward to seeing other people's entries, and I hope we can do more videos together in the future. Until next time, keep blazing that trail. So now it's finally my turn, huh? Well, I hope I don't disappoint you after all these great picks. So, out of all of these fantastic choices, what's my choice for this collab? Well, after I gave it a little bit of thought, I decided my pick is going to be for Guruman, A Monstrous Adventure, a Falcom developed title that was sadly never really able to reach the level of popularity that franchises like Yeast, Trails, or hell, even Xanadu were able to. 
And that's honestly a damn shame, because there were very, very few Falcom experiences quite like it. Instead of having a long-running multi-game narrative, or focusing on a bombastic adventure, Guruman has an energy that's more like an interactive Saturday morning cartoon. Everything is just so bright and colorful and bouncy. It has this sense of whimsy that makes exploring the very world Guruman, or I guess Purin as I should call her, you know, because she can't be Guruman, this world very interesting to me. The combat is also incredibly engaging as well. Fun, simple to understand combos mixed with cool special moves and unique combat mecha-like drill powers being a major factor of dealing damage, and a rhythm bar that dictates critical damage depending on how well you time your attacks, adds this to make the game a simple yet satisfying experience. It's such a damn vibe of a time. I honestly hope we do one day get a sequel, as while I adore it as a game, there were aspects I wish it went into more. An interesting example being that I wish the characters could get a little more added to them since the first game's cast, while charming, did end up being pretty one-dimensional in the grand scheme of things. So it would be really nice to see that and its world get a little bit more of a deep dive if a Guruman 2 is ever greenlit. I suppose that's it for my section, and since it was the last one, let me get into my final thoughts real quick. And with that part said, we have now reached the end of the video. This was really fun to not only do a part 2 to my original video about game sequels, but team up with a bunch of homies that I've never collabed with before. So thanks to everyone who joined me on this video. And if you're curious about their content, I'll be leaving their channel links down below. Go check them out, they're pretty damn good. And if you like this video and want to see more, do me a favor and like and subscribe down below, along with leaving a comment to please them algorithm gods. Hope you do, because I actually really do like making these videos with my friends, so I might be making a part 3 sometime in the future if this does well. That's all folks, have a great day and I'll see you next time for more RPG content.